X-Men 97. Okay, so it is a soft continuation of the original cartoon from the early 90s, which was on Fox Kids on Saturday mornings, something I grew up enjoying immensely as a young kid, but not quite probably understanding all the intricacies of, but nonetheless enjoying, mostly for the aesthetics and the cool animation and visuals and continuation story, which was something relatively new for at least someone my age at the time. Anyway, other than having that sort of fondness for it as a young kid, I didn't have a lot that I remember other than things like specific performances from certain characters like... Apocalypse and Magneto and Charles Xavier and of course everybody's favorite let's go Bob Cal Dodd is Wolverine and a couple other key performances from characters that were really great at the time Beast and oh my gosh Storm she's like the James Earl Jones voice actor irreplaceable so glad they got her for the new one but anyway that brings us to X-Men 97 which I've really enjoyed the first couple episodes of and I was really excited for the third episode and when I watched it it felt like the show had just fallen off a cliff in quality from what I'd seen in the previous episode so I just want to go over some of those things here and see what you guys think please tell me if you disagree in the comments totally fine so first off sidebar magneto lifts uh what why are we doing this there's so many other character models that they followed really well. You look at like Gambit, it's perfect. Wolverine, totally looks like Wolverine. Rogue, looks like Rogue. Storm, the mohawk hair is different, but that's following something from the comics that is really great. Why does Magneto have these weird lips? Just please stop it. Okay, look, here's what it looked like in the original cartoon. Let's, let's just do a little fun mock-up. Here's what Magneto looks like with normal lips. When I say normal, I mean, maybe not normal. Maybe your lips are like this. Don't feel bad. Anyway, okay. Cyclops, he's not torn about who to back up. Clone or not, this is the woman who he had been with for a while. Him taking Beast's side. Okay, he's trusting him, I guess. But at the same time, this is the mother of your brand new child. Felt weird and out of character. Anyway, okay. Mr. Sinister on the baby monitor. Can he just project himself out? Why is he trying to spook her? It's his clone. It should be like, it's time to listen to me now. Not, ooh, I'm trying to freak you out on the baby. Like, I don't get it. The next thing, how would Beast know Mr. Sinister's, quote, artistic fingerprint? That's weird. Also, why not just control the brain of the regular Jean Grey? What is the purpose of this clone? I know the comic probably makes more sense, but a lot of people I've seen complaining about it, like this was this big arc in the comic and there was so much that was taken out and compressed. It feels really haphazard. Also, the baby crying bit? When clone Jean Grey hears her baby crying, that's a moment where you have her like, snap out of it. It's really strange that she's ignoring the baby's crying. That's like a deep guttural thing. There is really some nature stuff to that. You look at like a bear and approach its cubs, it will rip you to pieces. Having her not react to that, because later they establish a real Jean Grey talking to her, snaps her out of it, but that seems like a, a less of a stimulus than your newborn crying. Okay, so there are some good things with this, but with the nursery horrors and the TV monster during Jubilee's, you know, Disney plus and chill, and, you know, never mind, let's not go there. Okay, the animators, you could tell there's certain fans of things. There's nods to The Ring, a really great old Yoshiaki Kawajiri film, animated film called Wicked City, Poltergeist, you cannot tell me the teddy bear is not a nod to Akira, and of course, The Thing, but okay, so Portal to Hell opens up. I get why Bishop threw Wolverine to save Beast, but there were no words. There wasn't like a, hey Logan, sorry, but hopefully you'll forgive me for this, or Logan, Hank, and then Wolverine may be responding with something like, guy can play for the Broncos with an arm like that, instead of, hey Beast, you're stinky. Look at Lord of the Rings, how they handled the, like, no one tosses a dwarf and not the beard. Those were like perfect little witty bits that didn't feel out of place. Instead, we get a joke about how Beast a man who I, I don't know, I feel like Beast, okay, it's weird. I feel like Beast would smell delightful. Beast, the well-read man who's always in a lab coat, dressed to the nines when he's asked to appear in court. Is he going to have good hygiene? If you were to ask me if I had to smell saber tooth, I don't know. I guess maybe that's because he's in hell and maybe he's sweaty. And that's why he's like, oh, you smell like burnt fart. I thought it was just poorly written. And I missed opportunity for making a joke about Bishop just throwing him. Anyway, so finally when they get out, evil Jean Grey suddenly turns into a Power Rangers villain. There's no nuance or any opportunities taken to like address a possible identity crisis where Clone G might be facing. Maybe just a bit more time to transition her from new mom to demon possessed monster lady. But wait, no, she's jealous now? <sighs> okay. Also, she then names herself the Goblin Queen. Why? I, maybe they explain this in the comic. Isn't she mad that the others don't think that she's the real Jean Grey? So why choose yourself to be a different name than Jean Grey? I think that movie Office Space was like Michael Bolton. He's like, why don't you change your name? He's like, no, he's the jerk. Why should I have to change my name? If clone Jean thinks she's the real Jean Grey, why would she be like, and now I'm beyond Jean Grey? Wait, no, you said you were Jean Grey. Okay, you want to pick a different name? Fine. Why the Goblin Queen? Do you think your baby's a goblin? Look at any other X-Men's code name. It makes sense. Wait, Magneto. 
Huh, if I had to guess from the context, that guy's probably got something to do with magnets. Oh, good job. Yeah, he's the master of magnetism. Cyclops. Why is it? Oh, he's only got a single eye that shoots out beams from a singular apparatus. I, I get it. Cool. And I, well, now that I think about Jean Grey, <laughs> I guess in some of the comics, she's a Marvel girl or, but like, I know that it's funny when you watch the opening, it's like, codenames it Cyclops, Wolverine, Professor X, Jean Grey. That's just a plain name, I guess. So maybe it's a very understated joke about how Jean is super great at making code names and whether she's a clone or not. And maybe there's an opportunity for an observational joke there. Like, Morph could have made a joke about that. Oh, you picked that name? Wow. It's like, I, maybe she's terrible at names, whether she's a clone or not. But yeah, instead we get Morph doing a claws up the butt joke in the shower. Some people are saying that's like some sort of like quiet nod to bisexuality or something. I don't get that, but I thought it was just more like Morph being a creep. Anyway, Rogue's dialogue, talking about the buffalo redecorating or whatever. They're trying to come up with reasons to have her do her southern folksy mannerisms and really reaching. I mean, <laughs> the room wasn't even a mess when they walked in. I don't know, maybe the background artist forgot to tussle things up a bit, but when they walked in, the room's pristine. And the hallway in the house is pristine because Jean reassembled it after the hell portal closed. So what was she looking at that was such a mess? But that was weird. Um, Cyclops, don't punch metal walls, buddy. That should have broken his fist. Because Cyclops, as far as I understand it, he's a well-trained dude. He's in great shape. But he's a dude. He's not Colossus. Colossus is made of metal, so him going like, uh, you know, I don't know, blat or something like that's but then yeah, and he, you know, if you're gonna have Cyclops punch a wall, have him punch through the wall somewhere where it's a softer drywall because that's just as effective and kind of weird that he doesn't hurt his fist by doing that. Also, okay, Magneto, malevolent appropriations. I feel like somebody's just going and asking ChatGPT, what's a bigger word for bad guy stealing stuff? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's a great question. There could be words like malevolent appropriations. Rather than actually having him speak genuinely, saying we need to stop his malevolent appropriations focuses on him stealing. Whereas the whole thing about Magneto is Magneto has this deep empathy to him that also drives a deep anger towards those who harm who he sees as his people. And why is that? Well, you know, the whole World War II thing. Remember how he's got a little mark on his arm with some numbers on it? He saw his people endure something horrific. So seeing something like that happen, I would think maybe the better thing would have him say like, we must not let this act go unpunished or he will continue to harm the innocent. But like, no, Magneto's smart. He speaks with big words. So let's use malevolent appropriations. Yeah, speaking of which though, Sinister being called, quote, the most evil man who ever existed by Morph, shouldn't they maybe have thought about saying that in front of Magneto since, you know, saying this is the most evil person who ever existed to the guy who survived Maybe. Really? Okay, we cut to Sinister and is oh my god, what is he doing? He's gonna drown the baby. He doesn't have water breathing powers, does he? Oh, okay. I guess the baby can just float in that stuff and breathe. Uh, this was like a crazy Jesus it goes from actually sinister to silly quick. They could have made this guy actually well, nightmarishly dark. And the most evil man who ever existed. If they had the sense just be a little more careful with what they decide to cut and how they framed this act of putting a baby into a fing glowing green goo vat. Okay, there's a fantastic horror film called The Witch, or The v -V Witch, depending on how you look it up, because that's the old English way of Sidebar. This movie came out in like 2015, I think, and it's uh, the same guy who I think who did Hereditary. Great horror movie if you're a horror fan, but not for the squeamish. But that movie knows how to do baby horror. And if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't know if X-Men's trying to be a kid's cartoon or not, but the scene with Jubilee and what's his name, that's definitely not for kids. That would have terrified my son if I had him watch it. You can't show that to kids. So are you going to do it or not? Are you going to go all the way with this? Is this going to be a dark thing? Is he the most evil dude ever, or is this Power Rangers villain shit? And we get our answer in the next scene. We're back to the Power Rangers villain, the Goblin Queen. Okay, so she's not Jean. This lady gave her baby to Goo Vat Man. If she's a clone or not, Scott loves this kid, right? Why is he not crazy right now, screaming at her, Where is our child? Where is Nathan? Instead, he's like, Jean. She is not with the baby, which makes him not know where the baby is. Which, if you're a parent, that's terrifying. He doesn't know that his baby's being dipped in the goo vat right now. I would be blasting the walls apart. I would take the visor off and just start raw everywhere. Okay, also I get this is a big Easter egg for big X-Men comic fans, but why is Morph always changing into Member Berry's comic book characters for comic book fans? Instead of someone who an uninformed audience member might recognize, or at least comprehend the powers of more easily. You don't have to pander to me with a character I'm gonna go, ooh, and recognize him, but I want you to try this. I dare anyone here to pause the video of the X-Men and I want you to ask any non-comic book fan what this lady's powers are. Sword lady here. If they can guess what they are, then I'm wrong. <laughs> 
But if not, then what that means is the writers should have stuck in a character here whose powers we could have recognized. Something like, I don't know. What if he changed into Juggernaut? That would have been great for us. And obviously, if you see a gigantic dude, even if you have no idea what's going on, you're like, oh, that guy's big. He's probably really strong. You can have him change to someone like obscure, I guess, but don't choose someone like Vlash Morgalun, who looks like a small blue monkey but it sits there and then suddenly changes into a raging tornado when he jumps into action because no one's going to know what's going on until that character starts moving, I guess, right? I, well, like, you know, actually, I don't know. Now that I'm saying that, that might have been funnier for more to turn into a little blue monkey and then the, you know, maybe the goblin queen's like, huh? Because that would be funny because that's in character for Morph, the funny guy. Okay, now, finally, we get real Jean Grey. She pops in, and she starts having a mind argument with Clone Jean. And Clone Jean's angry that the real Jean took her family. But you were just saying you were beyond Jean Grey. And you also gave your baby to Goovat guy, and you're now trying to hurt Scott? You just did a blood lip kiss? Ooh, you're gonna bleed, too. But you're mad that real Jean took your family? Why are you hurting the people who you want to be your family then? I have no idea what this character is doing given the statements that she's made. Her actions make zero sense. And now we see the professor and uh, Stop what? It. it's not just Magneto. Stop it with the weird lips. Okay, now that Jean talked to her, the Goblin Queen has empathy for the best friend kid, but not her baby? <laughs> and now the love for her baby breaks Mr. Sinister's crystal. But not earlier when she was holding the baby behind her in an energy ball about to give it to the guy who's going to put it in a goo vat. And finally, the worst part of the, I mean, almost comedic part of the, the episode. The cherry on top, the little yeah, Cyclops. Don't you know how it feels to be abandoned? And then what does he do? He literally <laughs> abandons his kid before they can even send Nathan away. I, I don't want to lose him. I don't want to let go of him. Here, you take him. I'm going this way. Bye-bye. You could, I mean, this is a comedic scene, right? Like, that's how ineptly written this is. I just hate this episode so much. And here's the reason why, really, overall, they made this. The X-Men, they were a vehicle in which we could take current events and creative writers would be able to recast these kinds of events in a ways that would maybe make otherwise intolerant readers and audiences let their guards down. It would allow them to see those who were othered by a cruel and bigoted world as those who are instead worthy of being treated with dignity and understanding. But this episode is about Power Rangers villain shit. The second episode did such a great job with using the X-Men for that original purpose. I hate to spoil this for anyone who was watching episode two and just thought it was a cool episode. That episode was clearly written as a direct parallel overall to the events of January 6th. It was about showing leaders what happens when they stoke the flames of hate. They invite fascists to break down the doors and hang them as traitors as well. To have this garbage episode come immediately after what felt like true X-Men storytelling, it gave me such a bout of whiplash my that boy, I'm still trying boy. to decide if I want to come back and even watch the next episode. Now, I have a friend who's convinced me I need to at some point to watch it, but it's on the back burner right now. With amazing stuff out there like Shogun and the newest season of Invincible just now wrapping up, which that episode, the most recent one, phenomenal. I know I complained about the animation. It's really funny, by the way. Sorry, off topic again. Again, I don't want to say they addressed my video, but they addressed the concern that I know at least some other folks must have thought about the animation quality stuff. And I know it doesn't resolve it, but it's them attempting to try and at least give an explanation, which I appreciate that, even if I do still think they're having to point fingers at the wrong thing, which is audiences saying, hey guys, we understand we're doing our best. No, it's the bosses screwing this up, not you guys. You guys are awesome. Keep animating. All the shows phenomenally written. I wish they'd give you guys a bigger budget. Thank you for working so hard as you do. Anyway, back to this though. X-Men deserves better. I'm not watching this show just because a member berries. It did make me smile really big to hear Cal Dodd do his voice again. He did not miss a beat. And some of the voices are actually kind of more depressing than they are fun to hear. Rogue sounds like Rogue's grandma more than Rogue. But again, that's because it's been 30 years. And so I'm okay with that. But I watch X-Men now, at least, not just for those aesthetics. I watch it because I want to see interesting stories. And that was not what episode three is. And I hope they can shift things back to something more like episode two in the future, but we'll have to see. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for listening to this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoy it after the big channel update. I know a lot of stuff changed. Thank you for sticking with me. For those of you who are upset that I'm not doing the animation stuff, I promise I will be doing that again. There's going to be a separate channel now, though, because a way that YouTube works, if you don't make videos that have, quote, high engagement, and just to define, you know, some behind the curtain stuff for you, high engagement means that everybody who's on your channel is watching all of your videos. I know that the people watching animation are not interested in long form video essays. 
but I also know vice versa. People watching the video essays are not interested in animation necessarily. But for those of you who are, I'm having these separate channels for these things. I even have one for like video games. I have one for kids because I'm a dad and I have a kid that wants to watch YouTube all the time. I try not to let him, but let's be honest, kids want to spend lots of time online. It's very hard to let them be online without it being safe. So I'm going to have a channel for that. Very little stuff up on those things because I have to rebuild these channels from the ground up, which really sucks. They have to treat me like I have to be re-verified and all this other stuff. So I can't do videos over 15 minutes on those channels and et cetera. But I promise all this stuff will be coming over time. Just be patient with me. But for now, thank you for sticking with me. Thanks for joining up if it's your first video. I hope you stick around and I'll see you guys in the next one. What do you think now? Uh, so the kid got lucky that don't make her an X-Man. Not yet. <laughs>